a typical woman. Jeb Bush, too, would impose a no Just like a typical woman. Yeah. She's going to give him the silent treatment. <gasps> For those of you who <laughs> love Smith Radio. <laughs> give, the, give him the silent treatment. But she just said that. They said she had a horrible, horrible night. Well, here's why she had such a bad night. In she was under 2% on every single poll. This is why she did so bad. Um, she should have done. Well, actually, her poll numbers were have been slipping for a long time. So in her defense, she had to try something. Problem is, it backfired so bad. On two, She said she was raped. When? She said, I, like, I was a rape victim and a cancer survivor. And, like, like she was going on she was and on. raped by cancer. <laughs> Maybe that's what she meant. Well, like, she was given this... Like, this is who I am. I'm hard as nails. I'm a cancer survivor. I've been this, and I've been down, and you beat me, and I'm going to come back, and I'll come back. I'm like, uh, wow. TMI. Not only TMI, but wow, it sounds like you're bitter. Uh, maybe, but here's where her debate went horribly wrong. Not once, but two different times when the boys were shouting back and forth. No, she she tried no, she to... Sc- <laughs> now, by the way... The camera is split screen on the two guys shouting at each other. Okay. You don't see nothing off screen. You you wouldn't know exactly who it was. But all of a sudden, you hear this woman start screaming. And nobody's paying attention to her. And so she keeps repeating to try to interrupt these guys screaming at each other. Me being a viewer, I thought... What's the moderator trying to do here? What? What? Why is she screaming? It was Carly Fiorina. Oh, not the moderator not screaming. Not the moderator, because oh, one geez. of the moderators was also a female. But the oh. the uh, the the uh, the screen wasn't showing which woman it was. All you hear was a woman screaming over the top. You you see you you see you see this 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 is why this is why and and you know yes. Like no. two different times, and they wouldn't cut to her face. They didn't put her on the screen. Probably just they're trying to help her. <laughs> they were like, "No, no, no! Shh, be quiet, Carly." She, <laughs> she was trying to scream over the top of them by and scold them. She was trying to do the. They should, she should have cut. They should have cut her mic. <laughs> <laughs> should have cut her mic. That would have been too much help. Right, right. Oh, like two times. I swear, two times she tried. To scream over the top of two guys, yeah, because I know what her point was. She was trying to to uh, show that she was the presidential candidate by scolding the two immature boys that were yelling at each other. Right, right. No, obviously. But it just sounded like off so wrong. You know what it sounded like? It sounded like somebody's like, "Well, the house is on fire anyway. Let's just pour some gasoline on it." That's what it sounded like. <laughs> it really did. Oh, no. It really did. Yeah. Oh no. That is so funny. That's that's really what it sounded like. So that's why Carly Fiorina had such a horrendous night. Twice. I'm talking like a half hour or an hour apart from each other. She screamed once. Hey, did you hear Lindsey Graham? George W. Bush made mistakes, but he did adjust. George W. Bush made mistakes, but he did adjust. I blame Obama for ISIL, not Bush. I'm tired of beating on Bush. I miss George W. Bush. I wish you were president right now. Oh, I wish you were running again. I wish he was president right now. Whoa, 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 bro, bro. Isn't that what you're running for, dog? Dude, that's a, that's... Dog! What are you doing here? What are you... Uh, Lindsay, can I ask you a question? Um, what is it you say you You do do here? (laughs) Seriously, what do you do here? I'm running for president. You can all go to hell. On Bush, I miss George W. Bush. I wish you were president right now. We wouldn't be in this mess. Okay, okay. Do, can you can you do that voice? Can you do that? Yeah, but can you try to do, do it. Try to do it. Do it like like quote like like do him. Do him. Do him. What's the exact quote again? <laughs> oh, no, no, I, like, I miss George W. I, Bush. I miss George W. Bush, and I wish he was president right now. <laughs> Because if it was present right now, I wouldn't have to be <laughs> yelling into this mic and telling you guys to go to hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is. I, he needs to be present so I can. I would probably get hired by some major, <laughs> so I'm major. Sure. I'm sure. SNL might actually hire me. Absolutely. Positive. I would be over at NBC like. Now, what I'm telling you is. <laughs> 
So well, what we need to do is reelect George Bush. Right. <laughs> he, he needs to be a write in candidate. Right. And I'm advocating right now that you guys all write him in on election night. None of these guys, not me. No, no. You do not vote for Lindsey Grant. Me. You vote right in. There's a line at the bottom. Go ahead and write his name in because I wish he was president right now. What if I don't do that? Uh, then you have to deal with me. Go to hell. You have to. Oh. <laughs> go to hell. Well, you all go to hell. <laughs> and take Donald Trump with you. Yes. <laughs> you can all go to hell. <laughs> wow. I wish he was president right now. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Wow. He is. A, he. He went on. He almost had that his terrible. He almost had his um. Ha! Oh, the, his yes. moment. He almost that was uh, da, uh, da, uh, uh, what's his name? Howard. Howard. Howard Cosell. No, <laughs> <laughs> Howard Dean. Dean. Howard Dean. He he almost had his own Howard Dean moment right there. That was probably worse than Howard Dean. I was watching that speech live. We have talked about this on Smith Radio. It's how long we've been we've been on the air so long. There's like these old episodes from like the very beginning where I remember talking about this. I was watching the I have a scream speech live. And I remember as soon as I heard it, I said that didn't really sound very good. <laughs> it sounded like he may have lost control a little bit. Next thing you knew, no, they piled on him. The backlash for the I have a scream speech was way worse than I thought it was going to be. And I I saw it live and I remember having a little bit of a a little bit of a recoil, kind of like the Carly Fiorina recoil and and definitely right. Kasich. When Kasich's crying about how he wants to punch Putin in the nose. Wow, I just like I just don't I don't get that. So Dave Chappelle did a did a parody of uh, Howard Dean. Uh, did he? Black Howard Dean Chappelle show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, I'm gonna go yeah, off on a tangent, but um, line up watch a six minute but, skit. Yeah, for... no, but the, the Dean scream just heard round the world. I mean, that ruined ruined. All, all chances. And you know what? And, and when I heard the actual explanation for it, I'll bet you it's very accurate. When you're at these rallies, the crowd is really, really loud. And you have this microphone in front of your face, which is also hooked to loudspeakers that the crowd can hear. And you get your mouth really close to that microphone and you start to scream at it so that they can all hear. And the crowd is just roaring. When you're watching it at home... The audio you hear is from his microphone directly. The audience feedback, which would be microphones either facing the crowds or just hearing the crowd into the microphone that Howard Dean is yelling into, is very quiet, relatively speaking. Well, well, it's turned way down because you as a viewer at home would not watch something that where they're screaming. screaming. People right. screaming. No. So you have this, this – you hear all the cheering. It's loud. He gets close to that microphone. He's like, we're going to go to, to Montana. We're going to go to Ohio and Pennsylvania and Michigan and D- Detroit and Russia. And yeah! and he's screaming. <laughs> well, take the- back the White House. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it just sounded so bad. And, you know, right after that, he thought that that was a home run. Yeah. He thought oh, it was yeah. a home run. Oh, he yeah. was shocked when it turns out that that undid him. He was shocked. Right. All of his handlers that were there in person, they were like, man, great job. Big pat on the back. Right. You own this. Oh, yeah. You are going to be the next president of the United States. This grassroots movement. We got this. We got this. Turns out he got got landmined. He got got, got uh, submarined. He he got pwned. (laughs) He (laughs) He got pwned. So so, uh, Lindsey Gramnesty says that he wants to send tens of thousands of American troops to go fight ISIS and refuses to work with Iran, Russia, or Syria's uh, Bashar, Bashar Assad to crush our common enemy, ISIS. Lindsey Graham also said, you know how? Make America great again? Tell Donald Trump go to hell! <laughs> you sound like uh, Mr. Uh, I, no, I sound like Rand Paul's uh, dad. <laughs> Ron, uh, you know, I would love to Ron be Paul. 
Ron Paul. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty crazy. Uh, okay. Uh, the knee jerk reaction, hostility to working with Putin. Not only does Rand Paul belong to this school, so do Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. The three of them were like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to throw out the possibility of working with Putin, but why am I all mad at him? Rand Paul? Rand Paul, Trump, and Cruz. The three of them had the opposite uh, opinion of all those guys. So they were they were different in their thinking in the sense that, okay, let's figure out what's going on. Eh, I'm not talking about bombing planes, shooting planes out of the sky. I'm not looking at doing that. And I wouldn't throw out completely talking with Putin. Why not talk with him? I personally think that, uh, it. first of all, there's no evidence that there's um, inherent evil with Putin. We have to take some experts' uh, word for it. I mean, it's not like Stalin. Stalin had re-education camps where he was murdering, you know, what was it, millions of people? Right. Well, Putin also allows and has been backed by the Christian church in Russia. Really? And Yeah, and he works with... And we all know... The, I mean, Christian, it, the Catholic Christian leaders. For those of you youngsters out there that don't know, by the way, I've been watching that Cold War documentary. It's going to take me a year to watch it. Dude, it, you got to get it to me. It's 20 five hours we'll watch it in a day well oh I, i'm sorry it's 45 minutes because there's no commercials each one there's 25 of them <laughs> what so it's less than 24 hours we could watch it in a right. day. but no what i'm saying is is that uh, uh uh stalin everybody knows and knew back then if you know anything he was a staunch atheist because right. he was actually in churches when he was younger to become a priest minister whatever and he was like oh this is crap and he got out of the church this was before he got up uh hooked up with lennon do, do you not think... john lennon for all you what no <laughs> it's not john lennon no not john lennon okay so uh do you think that maybe maybe he was you know problems happen in the when he was at no church? i i just think that um some people got and said, remember, Karl Marx came out many, many years before Stalin was a little boy. Right. So this whole thing was brewing and rumbling anyway. And the Karl Marx thing was uh, – the uh, Marx Engels uh, Communist Manifesto was all about uh, religion was a big problem. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it would make sense to me if initially Stalin was told about – Christianity and raised as a Christian and then somebody got in his head and his in his own brain had such a massive backlash against religion once the the communist got in his head that he was bitter about it oh that is not Putin you're saying Putin has the backing of the Christian church in Russia so there's a big difference right um, and we know that Stalin was a murderous murderer not just a murderer a murderous murderer. <laughs> Whereas Putin, if he's murdered, he's doing a good job of hiding it so far. Who knows? I don't know. So um, that all being said, we don't 100% just blindly start trusting what him. They're saying that um, that they're between uh, – they're saying that they're trying to link somewhere between 34 to 49 million uh, deaths uh, linked to Stalin. Makes perfect sense to me. So if you say at the low end, 34 million at, okay. at the hand of Stalin yeah. were dead, um, a Putin, I, I, in this day and age, yeah. I don't think you could be around. Not even a fraction 34 of a million. percent. Not even no. a sliver. I don't even know. I mean, look how many people did. Hillary's killed. Oh, Hillary Clinton has killed more people verified, verified. There's a uh, more, more deaths verified associated with. Hillary Clinton than Vladimir Putin. Probably. De absolutely, absolutely. So here's my point. My point is, is that when evil reared its ugly head back in the 30s, we ended up deciding to partner with Russia temporarily, or USSR, in order to help defeat the true evil.